Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about the June signing period probably being shot down um, by the rules committee up in the NCAA, but that's kind of a take it or leave it type of proposition. Um, there's definitely some things that need to happen with the schedule that we can get into uh, over the next couple of weeks, but what I want to get into now is Heisman Watch. This is something we've been kind of doing throughout the last couple of weeks where we'll take a topic, whether it's you know the best teams in the conference or an underdog that could steal the show, whatever it is, and kind of break down conference by conference who is setting the pace at that individual um aspect of the season I suppose but today we're going to do the Heisman and the way that we're going to break this down is going to be a little bit different um, than what would normally be my Heisman rankings frankly because as we all know this would just be a quarterback segment if I was just doing straight up Heisman watch who are the five most likely people in every conference it would likely be 95% quarterbacks, and that's just kind of the way of the world. It's pretty much a quarterback trophy at this point. So I kind of want to add a, a little bit of uh, pizzazz to this, if you will. Uh, I want to include at least three positions um, for every single conference through the five guys, and then I'm going to add a dark horse uh, as well, kind of add a little spice to this, make it a little bit more interesting. So we're going to get into the SEC here, and we're going to start with the Dark Horse, and it's a guy that we talked about a lot last week, and someone that, frankly, I think is going to do really incredible things. The more I think about him, the more I get excited about this upcoming season for him, and it's Connor Wegman. I think this guy has been someone where you look at the last couple of seasons, and nothing jumps off the page. I don't necessarily need to tell you guys that the A&M offense has not necessarily been their calling card over the last couple of years, but... This kid is different than any other quarterback they've had really in a long time. Uh, I really like Kellen Mond, and he did a great job when he was there. Connor Wegman's better than Kellen Mond. Uh, I'll just be totally honest. So I think this guy has the ability to do some really, really fantastic things, and I think he has a lot of things going in his direction. I think this O-line is going to be really solid. I think Cam Dewberry is someone you should be watching for the NFL draft this next year because the dude's just an absolute beast. Um, it'll really be interesting if, you know, Colin Klein, maybe the fit there isn't quite what you want, or maybe it's absolutely perfect and they kind of fit together perfectly. The uh, offense he ran at Kansas State is not necessarily the offense that I expect him to run at Texas Tech, but overall, you know, there's a lot of things there that are, you know, quarterback friendly, make it a little bit easier. He probably won't have the quarterback run game the same way he did at Kansas State with Will Howard, but we'll see what happens with that type of thing. But if you can have a good O-line, if you can hold up for this kid and give him and put him in winning uh, situations, he's going to put up numbers. I feel very confident in that. The arm talent speaks for itself. I have no doubts about what he can do with the football. Um, but also, I, I think there's a, a little bit of a misconception I suppose but I don't know how many uh, people really feel aggressively about the wide receiver talent at Texas A&M but I think it doesn't necessarily get the uh, respect it deserves. I think Noah Thomas is really one of the most talented guys in the entire country and I think he has the ability to put up just ridiculous numbers this upcoming year so that's definitely someone that I think will be a go-to guy for them. Also he gets a huge chance uh, in week one against Notre Dame at home. If he can get that win at home he might be off running to uh, New York and to a Heisman. So it could be kind of a magical run, definitely not someone that is at the top of your list by any means, but a guy that could do it nonetheless. I kind of debated between him and uh, Garrett Nussmeyer, but the reason I didn't do Garrett Nussmeyer is I wanted to represent some different teams on here, and I had Harold Perkins on this list. Uh, he was my defender of the group because I wanted to get a little bit different here, but this one's a little bit tough because I was stuck between uh, Harold Perkins and James Pierce Jr. Those are the two guys that I feel like are the quote-unquote game wreckers for the SEC. The one big difference uh, between the two, at least in my eyes, Harold Perkins has to be a game wrecker. James Pierce can be a very, very good player, and or he can be even a good player. He doesn't even need, uh, necessarily have to be elite, and the Tennessee defense can still get a lot of good things done. If Harold Perkins is not a game wrecker for LSU, they're going to get torn to pieces. I'm just being totally honest. That's just it, There's no world where they play good defense and Harold Perkins isn't at the absolute center of it. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens there, how he's used, because... As we all know, it's been told time and again, how he was used last year was 
not how Harold Perkins is supposed to be used. Let's just be totally honest. A new staff is in there. Hopefully they get him a little bit more dynamic, rushing the passer a little bit more as he is there standing over Jackson Dart. So uh, this kid can do a lot of really, really incredible things. I think he can pick off some passes, take him back for scores, which obviously helps that just a little bit. And I think He's one of those guys, there's a couple of defensive guys across the country that you look at and say, I could see him in uh, in New York City at the end of the year. This is one of those guys, just because of his variability, his versatility, and everything that he can do on the football field is just absolutely remarkable. So big fan of him, definitely someone that could make some huge noise this upcoming year. And then I had Jalen Milrow, and uh, this was a battle between Milrow and Jackson Dart, um, but I went Milrow for one very simple reason, which is this dude is one of the best runners in the entire country. Um, and I fully understand that the passing game is not necessarily where you want it, uh, or you where you want it, or at least where you wanted it last year. But I do think it's going to get a ton better, and I think Kalen DeBoer is going to be a huge reason for that. Now, is Kalen is Jalen Milrow Kalen DeBoer's dream quarterback? Probably not. Um, but does he absolutely have the ability to be a great quarterback for him? Yeah, uh, there's no two ways about that. This dude can absolutely do incredible things this upcoming year, and we know he has a really strong arm. We know he's going to stretch defenses, and that's just the way of the world. And maybe that's their path to victory. I don't know. But I do think he's going to start making those NFL le- uh, level throws, you know, layering it over a corner and under a safety or over a linebacker and under a safety, doing the throws that. Frankly, there's some guys at the top of this list that are just incredible at. So he's got to take some steps forward. There's no two ways about that. But he has all the tools to win the Heisman. And he has a coach that can elevate him to the level to win the Heisman. So I think if he does all that, if he can kind of take that next step throwing the football, he'll join the parade of Bama players that have been lifting the Heisman Trophy since Mark Ingram kind of started the party in 2009. So it'll be really interesting to see what happens there. I don't think it's far-fetched at all to see him at the end of the day lifting that Heisman Trophy in New York City. But let's move on to number three, and I have Luther Burden. Um, I think when I look at Luther Burden, I've said this a couple of times on here, he is the best offensive player in the country to me. I don't think there's anyone that is better at their position than Luther Burden is at wide receiver. He is just out of this world good. And I think one of the big things for him is him and Brady Cook are in absolute lockstep. They fully understand exactly what the other one is going to do, when they're going to do it, and how they're going to do it, which is a huge advantage for him going into this season. And then another one which is absolutely huge for him is he's not the only wide receiver on that roster. And sometimes that can kind of hurt you where, you know, maybe there's too many targets to go around, but also it opens doors. You know, they're going to have to worry about Theo Weiss. They're going to have to worry about Mookie Cooper on the back end. So you're going to have open, uh, or you're going to have at least one-on-one opportunities with uh, Luther Burden. And one-on-one opportunities are basically one-on-zero with Luther Burden because he's going to make the catch and he's going to make a play. That's just kind of the way that he plays football. But also, it could be a Devontae Smith-type year if that were to happen. Frankly, Devontae Smith doesn't win the Heisman without John Mechie and Jalen Waddle when he was healthy and Jaleel Billingsley and all of the guys stretching out that defense so much to where when he caught the ball, he had tons of space to run in front of him. So, It would be kind of a Herculean effort to make this done. Obviously, he would join Tim Brown, Desmond Howard, and uh, obviously Devontae Smith as the people that have won the Heisman as wide receivers. But at the end of the day, this is a Herculean type player. So he might just be able to pull it off, and it'll be really interesting to watch him play regardless of if he's a Heisman winner or not. Um, But then it gets to the top guys. Quinn Ewers is at two for me. I think he's someone that just has pretty much everything you could possibly want going into this year. Um, There's obviously going to be some questions. There's going to be, you know, can he take that step forward with the deep ball, which will likely probably decide this conversation. If he is uh, dialed in on the deep ball early and often uh, this next year, it's going to be kind of hard to beat him out for the Heisman. I'll be totally honest with you. He has so many weapons around him. Isaiah Bond, Matthew Golden, Jonte Cook, DeAndre uh, Moore, Silas Bolden, it's just ridiculous how many guys that he has to throw the ball to, and Steve Sarkeesian calling plays is not necessarily a bad thing by any means. So there's steps that he has to take for sure. He has to make sure that that deep ball is working early and often during throughout the season, but I think he's capable of doing that. The uh, reviews in that have been absolutely rave. He's money from 20 yards in, but 
Beyond that, it's got to get a little bit better. It seems like it has, so it'll be fascinating to watch that. And if he makes it to NYC, he'll join Vince Young and Colt McCoy as the two quarterbacks at Texas to make it to a uh, a North Carolina. North Carolina make it as a finalist to the Heisman uh, ceremony in North, uh, in New York City, and if he wins it, he would be the first quarterback in Texas history to pull that off. So it would be just absolutely insane if you were able to. But um, finally, Carson Beck. Uh, this is very easy to me, very self explanatory. The best quarterback in the country, in my opinion, playing on the best team in the country, in my opinion. So. That's just kind of the way of the world. I think he's going to go number one overall in next year's draft. And if you win the if he wins the Heisman, he absolutely will go number one in next year's draft. He has plenty of weapons as well between Dominic Williams, Ra Ra Thomas, uh, London Humphreys, Ben Urasek, uh, Colby Young, Oscar Delp, Dylan Bell. That's not even an extensive list. This is just ridiculous how many guys uh, he will have to spread the ball around to. I've said it before. There's a reality where this team doesn't have anyone go over. 600 700 yards receiving but they have 400 or 50 oh my gosh 4500 uh yards passing so this dude is going to be absolutely incredible the o-line is going to be one of the best in the country he's going to have time to kind of sit there and dissect defenses and if you watch last year when he has time to do that he's essentially unstoppable so he's going to be just incredible I think he has a chance of doing something that hasn't been done at UGA in over 40 years since Herschel Walker uh, lifted that trophy so it'll be really uh, interesting to watch as of right now he would be my pick but I'm not making picks right now I'm not necessarily tying my uh my horse to that wagon quite yet but uh definitely someone that I think is going to have a remarkable season and kind of turn the college football world on its head just a little bit but Let's take our final break here, and when we come back, we're going to talk about Monday questions, and we're going to get into Alabama a little bit. We're going to break down the Crimson Tide because I think all of us have a lot of questions going into this season, so I'm going to answer three of them right after this, so stick with us. <laughs> 